Coming up, we talk to a sleep expert about the FAA's overreaching sleep apnea rule. Some of the most insane landings you'll ever see in the monster truck of LSAs. And flying wild China? AOPA Live this week begins in just a moment. The FAA is getting a wake-up call. Neither AOPA nor Congress is sleeping through the agency's attempt to create a sleep apnea policy by fiat rather than by rulemaking. Hello, everyone. I'm Tom Haynes. Thanks for watching AOPA Live this week. Well, it didn't take Congress long. Within days of this AOPA letter to the FAA administrator demanding that the agency go through the required rulemaking process to implement a major change in medical certification procedures, members of the House General Aviation Caucus introduced a bill requiring FAA to do just that. You'll remember from last week that the federal air surgeon wants to implement a policy that any overweight pilot with a body mass index of 40 or more would have to be deferred to a sleep specialist. There would be an expensive sleep study to determine if he has obstructive sleep apnea. Dr. Tilton wants to eventually lower the BMI so that every pilot gets evaluated for apnea. But one expert says BMI doesn't really tell you whether a pilot is at risk for apnea. Dr. Conrad Backer is a board-certified sleep specialist practicing here in Frederick, Maryland. The, I am not in favor of BMI as a measure just in general because it's the wrong measure. Uh, for example, uh, we, the only reason we have a BMI number is because it's simple. Uh, most people with BMI over 40 may have a maybe 50, 50 percent, probably less than that chance of having sleep apnea. Dr. Backer advocates a combination of indicators to determine if a sleep study is warranted, including an excise of 17 inches or more, along with other comorbidities such as high blood pressure, irregular heartbeat, or diabetes. AOPA believes that pilot education is a much better way to ensure that a pilot is fit to fly. And FAA Medical is, after all, just a snapshot of one day. Pilots are in the best position to understand what is actually impacting them on any given day. Ultimately, it's up to the pilot to determine his physical fitness to fly on any given day. Pilots are in the best position to be able to do that. In order to improve that situation is to educate them on what potential concerns might be. That's actually the basis of the AOPA EAA third class medical petition which hinges upon educating pilots to be in the best position to determine their physical fitness to fly on any given day. You can learn more about obstructive sleep apnea in the medical section of our website, and you can read more about the FAA's proposed policy and AOPA's response on AOPA.org. Sleep apnea is a very serious medical disorder. I'm glad it's on the radar screen of the uh, FAA. I don't necessarily agree with how they do it. Well, turning from medicine to machines now, here's one where you wonder how they do it. Imagine a 400-foot strip on a 20% grade, trees on either side, obstructions on either end. Now, imagine landing on just the last quarter of that space. AOPA Pilot Senior Editor Dave Hirschman did just that when he flew the Just Aircraft Highlander Super Stole. It's just right in front of the shop there. So that's it right there that we're looking at. Yeah, right there. This runway is nothing more than a small clearing on a steep hillside. There's a swamp at one end and a brick building on the other. See, that does not look to me like a, anybody's idea of a runway. Oh, that's going to be a long one compared to what we got in the backyard. Yet this is the place that Just Aircraft has chosen to prove its Highlander Super Stole, a two-seat backcountry aircraft that brings monster truck sensibilities to the light sport aircraft market. And that was probably way longer than it needed to be, but... Leading edge slats, 40 degree Fowler flaps, and vortex generators allow the Super Stole to fly at incredibly high angles of attack, and there's no such thing as a power-off stall.
A-frame landing gear can absorb hard impacts, and the 29-inch Tundra tires roll over just about any surface. Runways are strictly optional. And then we can just pull back, start slowing the airplane down. <laughs> Dave Hirschman, AOPA Live. What a capable airplane. You can read more from this monster truck of an airplane in an upcoming edition of AOPA Pilot Magazine. Coming up after the break, China opens its airspace and a $500 burger. You're watching AOPA Live this week. Welcome back to AOPA Live this week. Another step forward for the Small Airplane Revitalization Act. It's now been signed into law. President Barack Obama signed the measure on November 27th. The act takes many ideas from the Part 23 rewrite, makes them law. The law requires the FAA to implement the recommendations by the end of 2015. Big news for general aviation out of China. Starting next month, the Chinese government is relaxing some restrictions. Certain GA flights will be able to fly across the country with just the approval of civilian authorities. No military review required. China expert Jim Fallows has told our Warren Morningstar that this is a really big deal. This has been something that for the past 10 years has been in discussion in China. And the larger drama of China is the tension between the traditional security-minded communist, if you will, forces and those who are trying to liberalize the country in various ways, business forces often. And the airspace has been a particularly important access for this dispute because uh, a huge difference between China and the U.S. is that, you know, of course, the vast majority in the, of airspace in the U.S. is not military, but the vast majority of airspace in China is military. So, so sort of explain the difference. I mean, under the military control, it could take hours, if not days, to get approval for a flight, correct? Yes, there's a, there's a combination of factors, all of which have, have um, made it difficult for Chinese GA to develop as fast as the geography of the country and, and its uh, business base w would indicate. One is there's not yet the network of infrastructure that it, we have in the U.S. They're building more airports. About 100 of them are underway now, trying to get fuel distributed. But even more than, than that is the fact that since um, it's essentially most of China is, is run by the PLA, the People's Liberation Army, for the, the airspace. And so you can't go through it at all in some cases. In other cases, it may take uh, days, weeks, a uh, very long time of advanced request. And so the main virtue of general aviation is, of course, it's ad hoc, um, short notice nature. And if you can't do that, that's made it very difficult for people to uh, there to, to develop the, the industry. So if there's more chance now for the business people in China, both domestic and international, to go from place to place uh, in business aviation, both turbine and piston driven, then suddenly the I think the potential market in China that's been there for quite a while will be able to develop more and more rapidly. Fallows argues in his book that aviation is a proxy for all of the larger development issues in China. You can see more of that interview on AOPALive.org. And you might be interested in following the American Futures blog on TheAtlantic.com. Jim and his wife Deborah are flying their Cirrus around the country to smaller communities to report on things the mainstream media miss. They call it the classic road trip, only by small airplane. Well, if you're overstuffed on turkey right now, a hamburger is probably the last thing on your mind, even if it's a $100 hamburger. Well, make that a $500 hamburger. Aviation headset maker Lightspeed has a new promotion, the $500 Burger Getaway. But uh, buy a Zulu 2 or Sierra headset directly from the company, and they'll enter you into a weekly drawing for a $500 package that includes avgas, rental car, dining, and lodging. Inflation, you know. It's a busy week, Thanksgiving on Thursday, Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, then comes Cyber Monday. After that, let's introduce you to one more, Giving Tuesday. It's a day when you can open up your wallet, if you have anything left after the holiday shopping, and give something to nonprofits. We're hoping you might consider the AOPA Foundation in that regard, and there's an exciting opportunity for the foundation, but we need your help. There's a challenge grant on the line. A donor is matching $1,000 per donor for every person up to 50 who joins the Hat in the Ring Society. That requires you to give $1,000 or more. AOPA Foundation Donor Relations Specialist Justin Basso says you can really be a leader by throwing your hat in the ring. 
Your money goes to preserving airports and advancing aviation safety, as well as our Giving Back program, which funds many scholarships like Girls Inc., which is teaching young women how to fly through hot air balloons and various other aviation activities. Those are the key important things that we're so excited about to present to all of our members that throw their hat in the ring. You can find out more at AOPAFoundation.org. And that's it for this holiday week. We hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. We'll waddle right back here for another show next Thursday. We hope you'll join us. I'm Tom Haynes. Thanks for watching.